Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with our circuits and this is our diode circuit first example. In this example we'll look at the very simple situation where we use the constant voltage mo model. Of course we will look at our calculations step by step and also verify these in SPI's simulations. So let's look at our example. We have this circuit given. We have one voltage source VS which has a value of 5 volts. Three resistors, R1, R2 and R3, the values are shown here. Open, the diode is considered to be an ideal, but we will use the constant di uh, voltage model. We would like to calculate the following, the current through R1 and also the current through R2 and the diode current, so the current through D, which is shown here, the diode. And we would like to know the voltage across the resistor R3, so V3. Those are the values we need to calculate. Now let's look at the solution. Before we move on, let's briefly discuss what is a constant voltage model for this diode. Now the expression or the mathematical expression for the diode and also the uh, VI relationship between the voltage and the current for the diode is rather complicated. But for most cases you can use a very simple model and this constant voltage model will do the job for most cases. What is that? You have a VD on which designates the on voltage for the diode. So before this VD on the diode is off so it is considered to be an open circuit. So that is called actually a reverse bias. You can see that here. So an open connection for the switch. And when this VD on is passed then we have a constant voltage which is the VD on and that value is 0.7 approximately. It can vary between 0.5 and 0.8 depending on the current through the diode. But for most cases we can use 0.7 and that's also what we use in this example. If it is connected, so the switch is closed, that is called forward bias. So we have reverse bias lower than VD on and four bias if it is VD on or larger. So let's now use this model for these equation for these questions. So analysis, and we prefer to use, and I prefer to use personally, the node voltage analysis. So I will designate that node X, and then use Kirchhoff's current law at node X. We see the current errors already in the circuit, so we can say I1 is equal to I2 plus ID. So that is just a summation of these uh, currents. Now we can now use the Ohm's law for each current expression. So we can say the Vs minus Vx over R1. That is the voltage drop across this. So the Vs minus Vx over R1 will give you I1. The voltage drop across R2 is just Vx. And divided by the R2 we will get the current. In a similar case for this part for the branch of the circuit, the diode itself is considered now to be a DC voltage source, which is this VD on. So that is then the VX minus this battery, so to speak, divided by then the resistor R3 will give you then the current in this branch, which is then ID or also the I3, if this current is uh, required here. So we have now the following, it just substitute the values given here in this example. We have 5 minus Vx over 100, Vx over 200 plus Vx minus 0.7 over 400. Now we can now simplify this by multiplying the left and the right hand side of the equation by 400. Then you will get this. So we will lose this 400. You will get a 2 times the Vx and you get five, 4 times the 5 minus Vx. Now if you work out the parentheses for the left side and then add these two 2x two and Vx together, you will have this expression. Now, simplify it further, you will get the constant on the left side and the variables on the right hand side. So you will get the Vx expression, which is 2.96 volts. This is an important step, so we can use this for other required values for our problem. Now then we have the following situation. Since we know the Vx, we can now calculate the easily the one is the Vi2. So we can say I2 is Vx over R2, which is then 2.96 over 200, will give you 14.8 milliamps. So this is already question B. 
Okay, now using then the voltage Vx also here, and we also know the battery voltage, which is then the diode Vd on, we can say the V3, this voltage is the Vx minus the voltage drop across the diode in the forward bias condition. That's shown here. So this is actually in this branch, you use the Kirchhoff voltage law. Now, if you do the calculation here, you will get 2.26 volts for V3. Now, that is then the question D. So we do a first B and then D. Now, the next one is the ID, which is then the current in this branch, which is exact same as I3 flowing from top to bottom. So we have series connection. So we can say that is also V3 over R3. And then you just substitute the values we have and you get 5.65 milliamps. Now, since we know the ID and also the I2, we can use now the first equation from the Kirchhoff's current law at node X. They will give you I1 is equal to I2 plus ID. So just the summation of these two values for the currents, you will get 20.45 milliamps. Okay. Now let's collect the uh, values we have determined. These are the values. Now also look at the simulation results. These are of course important. This is the circuit I have prepared in the SPICE simulator. This is by the way the VS, not the VA, but this is just a small uh, typo here. We have the R1, we have an R2, and we have also the R3, and this is a diode. It is not an ideal diode, but it is considered to be a constant voltage model diode, so we can use this. But you can see it is not exactly 700 millivolts, but it is close. So we can say in the circuit or the simulator, the model is a little bit rather complicated, but still very close to what we have used. Now let's check this. I1 is here in this branch is 20.45, etc. So a little bit larger, but that is really close to what we have calculated for I1. The I2 is 14.774, so it's really close to 14.8 milliamps, so also very nice. I see here the I3, which is actually ID, which is 5.678 milliamps, which is also very close to what we have here. That small error is just due to that voltage drop across the diode, which is a little bit lower than 700 millivolts we have considered. The V3 is 2.271, so 2.271 volts, also very close to what we have here. Again, that small error is due to that voltage drop across the diode. So we can say the results, the calculations, and also the simulations are verified, so they are very close to each other. Only the error, small errors due to that voltage drop across the diode, which is the VD on we have expected to be 700. That could be the case that this is a little bit larger or a little bit smaller or maybe around 550 milliamps, uh, millivolts, that's possible. It doesn't really matter. It really does matter when you want to uh, have a really precise uh, design, then you need to adjust your values in your circuit. Okay, now we have now verified this in the simulator, but let's also look at the actual simulator and also discuss the circuit there. So now jump to the SPI simulator and also see how you can generate these values there. All right, we are here in the SPI simulator. I already prepared the circuit for you. You can see this VS and the resistors and also the current arrows to measure the current in each branch. This is the voltage meter, which will measure the volts, uh, voltage across this resistor R3. Okay, now let's uh, determine the values for the currents. So these are the measurements, so we need to measure these four. So you go to analysis, DC analysis, and then do calculate node voltages. This will produce all the values you have in your circuit as the measurements. So we get the blue, uh, values here. Those are the values we just showed also in the slide presentation. So those are again verified. You can do that also in a different way. You can say I go to the analysis, DC analysis, and I would like to know the table of results. That will give you more information. So you get a table, a large table, with a lot of information. And what you can do, you can click on, for example, a component with this pen and it will be highlighted in red. So let's click on it. You see it will be highlighted here in red. You can see the specific current and also the specific voltage for that component. That's also handy when you want to uh, determine that specifically for that. You can also see this node, which was in our case node 5, was actually node X. So if I click on it, 
we can see it is highlighted here, it was 2.96 in our calculation, so it's very close to that, so it's 2.955 volts. So everything is verified, and you can see you can check your work in a simulator in different ways, using a table or just go directly to the values here by the node analysis. All right, guys, this is for this example about a diode circuit. This is a very uh, rather simple example. I just want to start with this simple example to illustrate the concept of the constant voltage model for the diode. We will continue with more examples about the diodes and also using AC signals as an input. So I will uh, upload more in the coming days. So keep in touch. And if you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.